They start off mellow because they're all in their deck chairs. It's like a summer afternoon, a little gentle, you know, yeah. their glasses of Prosecco. But no, when we got into it, when we got to Stockacre and Waterman, when we got back to 1988, they suddenly come alive. And then, uh, yeah, by the end it, it rocked, it was great. Of course, um, uh, there's, you know, obviously there'll be a lot of people in the crowd that remember, you know, Brother Beyond, who you fronted, and, uh, you know, you had uh, other hits uh, as well, which we'll come to in just a moment. Uh, but it's a big retro thing happening at the moment. Is it is that good to you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I said this to uh, Claire Groban about eight months ago. We were sort of talking, and she was saying, "Surely it's got to end all these '80s retro festivals. Surely the phone is going to stop ringing." And it doesn't. I mean, last weekend for me was Chill Fest with Tony Hadley and the Human League. Um, I mean, every weekend there's something going on where you know we get phone calls saying, "Can you come and sing that?" You hit, you hit, right? Two hits, <laughs> two hit, what? Hit, you know what I mean? Come on, pick yourself up, mate. No, it's great. It's really, um, it's it's fun and. What do you think? Uh, it's some scar, scarring just there. Really, really. <laughs> no, I, I, my <coughs> mum and dad both look really young. Uh, I think it's just in the genes, a bit of healthy living. I do a bit of running and stuff like that. But, um, and I have to say, my co-host today, Hazel. Hello, hello. Hello, Hazel. Is uh, you're 21. 24. Um, she's just, she's just mortified me by saying she was born in 1992. I know, <laughs> but she watched your set and was gobsmacked. It was absolutely amazing. I've got a question for you. Do you prefer singing your all the tracks, the crowd pleasers, or you did a few current ones there as well, some little chart tracks? So which ones do you prefer to sing? I, I like. I, do you know what? I just believe in giving everyone what they want, and I want, I want. I love doing the tracks where I can get them involved. So I kind of, I always love doing Don't Stop Me Now, Queen, because I can just get them, you know, your arms waving like that, and they really do sing it strong. So I quite like singing those songs as well. I mean, The Harder I Try, Brother Beyond, it was written by Stock Aiken Waterman, so I've, I've always been used to singing other people's songs. And uh, so I enjoy it all, really. I, I, love, I love it when I hear them sing the chorus of Harder I Try. But I also like doing Don't Stop an Hour and Uptown Funk, which they, you know, they have fun with, you know. Uptown Funk was one of my favourites, but you're from Lancashire, so do you prefer doing hometown gigs or coming on tour like you have today? Um, I never do hometown gigs. I mean, <laughs> the last time I had a gig in Burnley was, you know, about 10 years ago. No, I, last weekend I was in Hertfordshire, it was Chill Fest with Tony Hadley and the Human League. Weekend before that was in France. Weekend before that I think was Bogner, you know, so... I'm always on the road um, doing these kind of things. And uh, like I said, you know, I don't do anything else. I do the school run in the week with my little boy, who's five years old, you know, I take him to school, bring him home, we go and play football together. And then weekends I go and do things like this. It's great fun. That's oh, fun for my dad, isn't it? <laughs> hey, so I did mention she, she got very excited and uh, loved hearing um, uh, Everlasting Love again. I was quite taken aback when I said, yeah, this man had that song in the charts. I mean, do, do, do people constantly surprise you when they uh, come to your gigs about what they do and don't know about you? Um, uh, I'm not sure really, but I mean, everybody knows Everlasting Love. There have been so many versions of it. But the one I did today was a uh, top five hit for Worlds of Heart in yeah. France and places like Switzerland and Belgium. So, but most people don't know that version. They? But they, they, you know, they know I'm the just, chorus. I'm just looking at my uh, uh, man that's been a producer of mine in radio for many, many years. We played Worlds of Heart a lot, didn't we? Yeah. It was more than just a hit in France, my friend. Okay, good. Well, so, I mean, I joined the band uh, a couple of years after Simon Cow put it together. Yeah. Um, and so, but, but from that moment onwards, we never worked in the UK again. It was always, we got signed to Germany and then went sort of become successful in France. But um, just so, Gamma to Hazen, 24. Yeah. Okay, so you weren't born. No. <laughs> My hit was, you know, I was doing Top of the Pops four years before you were born. And it was quite funny last week because I, I, I put a band together to play a, full, a fully live set. Um, and it, I went through the, uh, the band's age and I said, oh guys, when were you, you know, how old are you? And the drummer, this is quite funny, he said, oh, I'm 19. And my mum had to drive me here and bring my drum kit. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't believe it. You know, and I told the crowd this, that none of the band were born when the part I drive was in the charts, which is quite ironic since they were playing it for everyone. But, uh, yeah. but life's good now? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I'm, I'm busy right through to the end of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just a great... I'm so thankful that... I mean, look, 
It's great now, but you have to go through the really fallow, tough years. So when Brother Beyond ended, nothing for like a decade. Uh, when Worlds Apart ended, nothing for about eight years. And if you wait long enough, it's like an old fossil, you dig it out of the ground, suddenly it's worth something. Yeah. And then people start calling you and they want to hear those hits again. So, yeah, those sort of that nostalgia, which we, we just love in the UK. Yeah. Um, it's well, just... listen, the, the, the most listened to digital radio station in the entire country is all 80s. Is that really? It's, it's, it's not going to die for a long, long time. You, you're going to be earning enough. some time to come. Oh, oh, Can I just ask? We were just uh, on your intro there. It was uh, it was almost like uh, your days with PWL began almost as an accident. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, when we were working in their studio with some other producers, um, they had a traditional Friday afternoon pint in a pub just around the corner from their South London studio, and we, we had a pint with them. You know, as I was having a beer with Pete, and he's like, "Yeah, you, you guys are. Yeah, we like you." And I think he, he actually stuck in his head. And when there was this auction, um, although EMI bid for it, they didn't ask for Brother Beyond to be produced by them. I think they asked for the Bell Stars. But Pete said, what I'll, about... I'll take you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't these <laughs> yeah <he's laughs> uh, Pete said, well, what about, we've, we've met this band Brother Beyond, we, we think they're quite good, what, what about them? It was total, you know, you get those moments in your life where it's just, uh, you know, Right, it's your moment. Time, yeah. It's your moment, and you better make use of it. Um, so yeah. So when you were working with Stock Aiken and Waterman, uh, because uh, you know this is Pride Radio, they they are. I mean, I'm looking at my uh, my producer again. They're gay icons, Stock mm -hmm. Aiken and Waterman, absolutely, and their music. Is, they had a, a, a system for, for, <clears throat> for making sure songs were hits, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they had a real knack, and I don't, I don't know how they did it. I'll, I'll tell you the story of what Pete told me about the harder I try. And I, I think it's it's very similar to Kylie's, one of Kylie's big kids. I said, Pete, so when you called me at three in the afternoon, you know, when did you write the song? He said, Nathan, that song was written about three hours before you got to the studio. He said, I came in that morning and I had this title in my head. Harder I try. I gave it to the guys, um, to Matt and Mike, he said, and I said, can I give it a Motown film? And, uh, he just wrote it in the three hours before I arrived. So they were writing it while I was on the tube on the way to the studio. I turned up, I left at about six o'clock. I thought, I just sang a hit song. That is a hit. Yeah. And uh, that, they kind of did it like we'll perhaps go to the office. They go in and that's their working day. And they just had that knack at that time. Where in your, when you're in that sort of halcyon kind of moment, or they could just go in and just do that, and obviously they wrote hundred or so. Yeah, yeah. Didn't they, so. Did you did you did you feel and think that when when people you know when Stock Aiken and Waterman showed an interest in your band, did did you did you all think that's it, we've made it? Uh, no, I I still you know I had a the feeling, feeling that's I, good, yeah, I, st I had a feeling that the song was great. Yeah. About three weeks later, we met at EMI, you know, in the offices, and they played the song, and we all went, that sounds great, is not it? But it was only when it sort of, we kind of, did, you know, we used to do Julia Best Discos and all yeah. these sort of promotional events, Radio mm -hmm. 1, you know, road shows out there. And then it, it went into the charts at about 34. And we thought, wow, something's happening here. And then it kicked up to 24. And then we got asked to talk the props and then it went into top 10. And, you know, it just, it just seemed to happen very quickly. Yeah. So, uh, See, Hazel doesn't understand because nowadays, if it doesn't hit number one in its first week, no, it's just... Finished. I remember Top of the Pops, though. Well, in the, in the 80s, a song could enter at number 40 and spend yeah. three weeks climbing to the top. No, people just overtake, don't they go straight to the top. Yeah, is, very different time. Is a, is a gig like this, is a, is a Pride gig uh, different to, to, to other gigs that you um, I don't know really. I mean, uh, I mean, out there today, there was, there was a lot of kids, so there's a lot of families, which is I, I love the way it's so inclusive. You know what I mean? Um, it's a pride event, but you know, everybody's welcome, and that's that's fab. Um, but you know, at, at Chill Fest, everyone brings their families, puts out the blankets, and sets out yeah. the chairs. So, you know, um, it, it's a familiar, um, you know, kind of moment for me. But uh, no, I love being here, and uh, I love being part of these. I did Sunderland. Uh, Pride, um, and uh, that was great too. So, you know, hope I'll get invited back to this one. I'm sure you will. <laughs> and Nathan, fantastic set.
Thank you very much for being with us today. And yes, good luck in the future. Still lots to be money. Still lots of money to be made out there. The oh, dang it! Don't let, let's not be mercenary about it. <laughs> At 107.9 FM. But it can still work there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Can you do me one yes. massive favour? Yes. My friend, my, my friend isn't. She's obsessed with you. Okay. My neighbour, I'll just use.